I have a question uh, for you. What? What, what kind? They're, they're from this Filipino baker. Oh, gladly. Because everyone is healthy in this room, so you're the only one that's not. I'm the only one that enjoys my life by not. No, I'm unhealthy. I just. Here's what I'll say about my general health is that. All fad diets. I am going to pick bits and pieces that I find positive about every food movement (laughs) and kind of make my own that works for me. And also, if I want a cookie today, I'm going to have a cookie today. That's all I'm saying. But can I say this? You still have your very athletic body. And the other day, remember I said, let's cuddle. I cuddled with you. Yeah. I came in there. It was too hard. It was too hard. The cuddle was too hard? No, No. my body was too hard. No, it wasn't too hard. It just felt like um, I was, and I don't want to say this in the right way, but I felt like. Let's say in a good way. I felt like Hussein, Hussein Bolt's backpack. It's Usain. Usain. Usain Bolt's backpack. <laughs> Usain Barack Obama. Like it was kind of like athletic and I like it. It feels safe. It's the Saddam Hussein's Bolt's backpack. Dude, you have the back of a Jamaican cloud. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I love that. You know, I it, it, I feel safe for me because I have no muscles. So when I, even when I'm cuddling you, I feel like you're cuddling me wow. through your back. Oh, that's love. Because right? if I'm attacked from behind, right, I just think you still got me. But you're like incons- <laughs> you're like inconspicuously like cute, but like dangerous. You're like a hippo. Oh, like I'm they dangerous. look cute, but they'll mm. chase you down a river and kill oh, you. Oh yeah. I do, what do I do? What kind of games do I play? Rip, rip it. Oh yeah, he does this thing that I ribbit? hate. He calls it ribianos. Ribianos. What's that? Where he'll pin me down and play the piano on my ribs. <laughs> yeah, I guess time for some ribianos, right? She hates it. But and then, also I'm stronger than her, so I could. Are you? Damn. But are you? Oh man. One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. It's like it's like it's like. Have you guys arm wrestled before? Wait, wait. For exactly it's, three seconds, he's stronger than me. Anything a, past three seconds, he's like a cheetah. Like he has yeah, yeah. no stamina. Yeah. Is um Amanda Nunez tough? She's tough. Yeah, because she fight. Um, you don't know the champ's name. <laughs> no, not tra- no. Juliana hey, Pena. No, I'm trying to. Kumar Usman. No. No. Anyway, welcome. You're saying you're Kamaru Usman. Yeah, you are. Anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, you Fuck are. Fuck yeah, man. I'm Kamaru Usman, right? It doesn't matter, right? I'm a man. I know you're a man, but all I'm saying is I have- I crush you. If the game lasts longer than 10 seconds, <laughs> I win. It, yeah. That's a that good is point. true. If you don't take me out in the first round, you're dead. But it, it, but the first 10 seconds, right? You can't do anything. Is, it, the first 10 seconds is Jorge Masvidal. <laughs> ben. Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal versus, Jorge Masvidal versus Ben Ben, all right? That's what it is, okay? I don't know their last names. I don't know how to pronounce their names, but you get what I'm saying, okay? Yeah. That's what it is. Welcome to another episode of Tiger Belly. I'm your captain, I'm Bobby Lee. No sotros papaya to you. Mm. And let's f- f- fulfill our destinies. And by fulfilling our destinies, we're going to you know, entertain and we're going to talk and we're going to check in with our fans today by doing another wonderful episode. Mm. Okay, How is everyone today? Fantastic. I saw something last night that boggled my mind. I ha- the only way to talk about it is that um, I have to say that I got a little high. Okay. 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 So I got really high. I was watching. I was seeing Aztecs. Was I don't know what that is. What, you, what is that? I would just see temples. Wait, a TV show? If I was watching, if I'm watching The Bachelor, I see temples behind them. No, oh, okay. You was, were. Was it in Mexico adding City? Adding imagery. Or, no, I there's I hallucinate imagery. It's just another. I see sunlight. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He so, lost his goddamn mind. I lost my what? He you lost your goddamn mind. Okay. Anyway, I have never seen anyone. Okay. I but, know we don't want to touch too much on your. I'm, um, getting, I'm getting sober. Right, okay. but it's like you just don't know how to do it. I do. You just don't know how to do it. I know it. how to do it. You know, here's here's why, how it sucks the fun out of like. Here's how I know I'm a, I have a problem. Yeah. Right. I'm like sitting in the Irvine Improv with, you know, some comics. One being one of the funniest guys I think in the planet Earth, Amir K. Anyone that likes watching live comedy, go watch that guy perform. Okay. He's so talented. He has everything. I believe that. Okay. But Amir, you know, he's been known to dabble in things, right? Party a little bit. The dark arts. You could say that. That's not the dark arts. I call them the light arts. The light he looks arts. at me from across the room in this green room in not even a humorous way because he's silly. 
You go, seriously, dude? You don't know how to do it. Thank you. Claude just said it. Boom. He looks at me right. I don't. I Here barely. He goes. I, he goes. I've been watching for three days. You just don't know how to do it. It's crazy. It's like he'll minimum four hundred milligrams of THC a day. He has freeze attacks. He'll do this. I'll tell you. This is all I wake <laughs> up to. I'm sleeping right, deep sleep at like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. All I hear is, babe, babe, and, and he's in the middle of the room like this, <laughs> in the dark. You're frozen. And then frozen. he'll be like, "Am I moving?" Oh my! God. Or am I walking? Yeah. Like he does like that shit. shit. And your brain's just like, "Why am I up?" And yeah. I'm like, "I if the drugs won't kill him, I will." Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. I I get into these real freeze attacks, right? Mm. Where I my body is the temperature like like below zero? That's what it feels like. Like everything is frozen, and even when I'm in the dr the dry sauna at the Korean spa, you're shivering. I, I I'm shivering in there as, as if I'm in like. He doesn't know how to do it. Yeah, I don't know how to do it. Yeah. So anyway, it's last like, night, can I go to the movie I watched or? All I'll say is, okay, let's for go. people who are proponents for weed and all that, that's great. Do your thing. There's a right way to do it. It's a great way. He's an addict. He don't know how to do it at all. I don't know how to do it. At all. Yeah. Chalada, baby. I love it. And the alcohol? My God, even worse. I'm the worst at alcohol. Yeah. And I don't know what chalada is. Oh, I thought you were saying enchilada. No, chalada. You know what a chalada is? No. So chalada. Del so oh. delicious. Oh, the tomato? Tomatoes, babe. Yeah. What's what? Oh, it's two different things. A chilada is uh, like Which one do you uh, like? You like the michelada? Like or do michelada. you like the chilada? Uh, whatever that has the C-H-E-L-A-D-A What's a chilada? I don't think I've had one. Oh, that's a tomato one. Tomato one. I like the Michelada is the tomato, and chilada is with like a margarita mix with beer. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. It's got a tomato vibe, though. I the opposite. It doesn't matter. My dad used to, my dad used to, when he- Same. Old Koreans love tomatoes. Before my dad used to go into a rage, you know, my dad used to go into a rage. My dad used to drink, he was an alcoholic too, he used to drink beer and clamato, right? Mm. What, why are you looking at him? It's just old Korean men. Oh, that's a, that's their go-to. I think it's tomato juice. A yeah. clamato. And I remember him as when I was a kid. He goes try, and I tried it. And I liked it. V8, yeah. right? But I think that's maybe why I like the the chiladas because it reminds me of my dad. The only difference between us is that he would go in on a fucking rage, physical abuse rampage afterwards. I don't do yeah. that. I go. Do I do that? I'm not violent. I mean, you're no, but you don't look like you're having fun either. I'm not having fun. No, I'm in pain. You're alone. That's the thing. It's like I'm about alone. him. Like, I'm alone. I'm alone. He likes to like drink and then wake up in his own vomit alone. Alone. It's like, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so emo. It's and I'm so emo. So emo. Yeah, I cry a lot. Anyway, I was watching. So last night I was. But also, while oh you guys God. were watching this and listening to this, Bobby is currently in rehab. Right, he's in, in rehab, moment. guys. In this moment. In this okay. moment. So in this very moment right now, I'm somewhere else. Correct. And getting help. Yes. And I'm right. so proud of you. Are you being, I, I am proud of myself. I'm I'll tell you why I'm proud of myself. Because I, for the first time I went, this soon I went. Because I haven't been, you know, two and a half months. I haven't been out that much long. Three months. Three months. But, yeah, but you it, did wake up in Mexico in your own vomit. I did. So, yeah. And so George I'm done. And had to scramble My point is, I'm you. the one that said, I want to go. We're going. I want to get help. What was that like for you in Mexico, George, being his handler? I was so manipulative, dude. Uh, I'm so sorry. That was probably the most trust uh, I've been in a long time. What, what, what is the kind of shit that would say to you? I <laughs> you mean, I mean, the text. I can't, I've pushed it out of my memory, just like he did. Chasing, chasing you around. Oh, no, just trying to get you to your hotel room. All right. Was just like, it was like being in college back again. Like, hey, maybe I'll take a nap over here. Yeah, and I'm like, no, I have to get him back to his hotel what room. What was scary was one night, it's because I know you told these guys, please follow him. I'm so worried because you love me so much and you're worried, right? But it's, I'm sick too. I'm you're sick too. I have a sickness. Yeah. But that made a little game in Mexico. You to, made it worse for them. Yeah, to, to hide from that's them. What I was, yeah, that's what I was talking about. Right. Yeah. So one night I, I escaped. <laughs> and so then I escaped them. You sound like a crazy person. A crazy <laughs> right, right, right. A crazy person. So they couldn't find me for hours, right? And then, and then Santino finds me, but he finds me far away, screaming, having a full blown fight with some Indian dude. Why? I don't. He does. He he comes a corner, and him and I are yelling at each other. I don't know what it was. I go fuck you, you fucking punja. Like he was going, you chink. It was crazy, right? Oh, wow. And Andrew, he's like, I'm so sorry, sir. And, and, I'm so sorry, sir. He pulled me. But it's like those little dangerous 
little things that like, like I don't, you know, when do I do that? You know what he, this is when I knew I was like, he's got a problem. Is that <laughs> me, his girlfriend, he would not let me see him in his hotel room and spend the night with him in Hawaii. Oh, that's right. He, I was like, oh, I just landed, gonna come see you. He's like, don't come. And he's like, and I'm like, what? Because it was a surprise. And then he says, no, no, no. It was a surprise, because and I had a drug den. You missed. I had a drug den going on, baby. He had a drug den. What's it? Why are you going right here? Uh, I got a call the night before Mexico. Bobby said uh, we'd all, he'd already changed his flight a couple times. Yeah. And then, like, when he was supposed to be on, in the airport, Bobby was like, "Hey, I don't know how to get to my. Uh, I, I don't know how to get to my. Fl what was it? I don't know how to get to my flight. I missed my flight. I don't know how to get a new one. Was he still in Hawaii? Yeah, this was when he was at the airport. And then I flew there. Yeah, yeah. to collect him. I don't know how to get to my air, my 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 flight. I'm. I don't, I don't know, know how to do. function. Like I don't know how to do anything. Like I'll, I'll end up at a gate and I so, go. So yeah, he needed to be in Mexico, I'm but confused. he was still in Hawaii, and then he oh, missed no, his no, flight. The, you, you only had your passport card, but you oh, couldn't yeah. get into Mexico because you needed your passport. So, oh, that's what it was. He had to figure. So that I out. flew to Hawaii <laughs> yeah, to yeah, collect yeah, yeah, you. That's why you had to fly to Hawaii to get me a passport. To and go then to he Hawaii. wouldn't let me in his room because he had. It was a surprise, and he had a whole drug den going on. And it was like I had to karate kick that. Day. Let me the fuck in. It was yeah, like yeah, a yeah, fucking. Because yeah. he didn't. I, at this point, he didn't want anyone to know that he had been drinking. And then I started getting banned from hotel rooms for life. You're a, you deserve you're, that. You were belligerent. I know. My point, though, is, is that that's why I'm going to quit. Because it's like in three months, I have never been banned from a hotel room for life. It's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. You know, so damn, I remember know, that. But call. can I just say this? And and people don't know what I'm going through too. And I'm not f making people think I don't want people to feel sorry for me because I have a great life. And I love the life that I built with you and I love everything about my life. But my I, but I am going through a lot mm -hmm. that are personal that, that people aren't even mm -hmm. privy to. They don't need to know. They don't need to know and I'll, they'll never know. I they will never know. I think you've been in pain for a really long I'm in a lot of pain. Right, and I'm not complaining. Everyone's going through pain. It was a difficult pandemic for everyone, and I feel empathy and sorrow for everyone. So I'm not complaining, and I'm not complaining. I'm not. I'm not. Right. I'm just saying to you, I'm telling you that I saw a movie last night, <laughs> and if I'm not, if I don't transition into this fucking movie, right, I am gonna go crazy. I have to say one more thing. Go ahead. When Clara called me that day. <laughs> Yeah, 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 dude, I was so angry at you. Which day? Oh, first I, you've never been angry at me. This is this is a delight. I Gilbert has never expressed any emotion to me except for. Wait, wait, let me finish. Let me finish. So I was angry at you when we got off the phone. I did shed a tear. When when he when I had to collect him in Hawaii. Hey, with the way George, no, listen, no, stop smiling. George, stop smiling. George, look at me right now. Okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine because I remember she called me. Yeah, yeah. Because she was crying and she was fucking pissed. Mm -hmm. And then, no, because we had just talked about you self-sabotaging your career. We have so many talks about how great you're doing. See, I'm, I'm feeling it already again because mm -hmm. I was so angry. Look at the man. That you fuck over what you, you're so, after everything Steven and David Cho were saying, and I was like, fuck, this guy's a legend, living legend. And George, uh. I'm having, he's having panic attacks because he's like, how do I keep this guy that I love from not killing himself? Mm -hmm. So I remember being like fucking punching my wheel like, why are you doing this? Mm. Not to us, to you. Mm. That's it. I Look, have one word to go say. Ahead, make your joke. I'm not make making a joke. joke. I'm, I'm just saying. I never. I'm, I'm not making a joke. I literally heard you right now, and I, I've never seen you like this. It hurts me. Do you know what he said to me? He's but, like, "I'm going to beat his ass." Okay. Gilbert literally said, "I am going to physically beat him." Okay. And I'm going to shake him back into reality. You don't feel that way right now, right? No, but I mean, especially after we just talked right now, like I feel like I've through this time I've had a better understanding of where you're at. Yeah, understand it. But in that moment, dude. Yeah, I was like, I don't want to work for this guy. Oh, really? It, it, to that? First of all, all right, all right, here we go. This is going to be great. Because then we're just enablers. I'll, that's fine. That's why I felt for myself, too. That's like, fine. what are you yeah. doing? Okay. This is great. This is great. Because there's two things happening right now, okay? I want to be honest with you, okay? And I, there's two paths laid for, before me what you just did right now, okay? And I'm going to go this road. Okay. Go to the real road. This is the real world. Okay. This road? Is that like... You don't like this road. Is that old Bobby road? <laughs> no, no. This is new, old, ever between. Present, future. Pre future, present, right? There's two instincts that I had just now, right? And I believe, right, that I'm in... De there's parts of me that are in denial, 
and there's parts of me that want to lash out at people, right? That's the comedy side. That's the hurt side of me. Mm. That's a side that don't get into my heart because I have all these weapons to fucking combat it, right? I think that's what this road is. This one is a road of listening. This road is I hear you, okay? Because the word that I, this road, the word that first came up was, guess what word? Interesting. Oh, and here's my response to that. <laughs> okay. I feel like that's where I have a downfall is I don't know how to, in the past, compete with the mm-hmm. interesting mm-hmm. arm because I don't know how to communicate like, fuck, man, this is serious, but you're so good at the interesting. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. what comes after that, Yeah, it's like, it's like fuck, he, he's, he's good at it. I don't know how to... Yeah, I'm manipulative. Yeah. I, I, I have such a complex... I have a complex system of survival, right? Just so that I can feel good. The, the, my whole objective in life, mm. I, I believe, is so that I could just feel n- normal. Yeah, he doesn't know how to self-soothe in a regular way. So if that self-soothing involves lashing out, manipulating, full-blown, like, just addict behavior, he's going to do it. Even It doesn't matter what the cost is to friendships or you or to us. So, I mean, we should talk about the movie now because... Um, You're getting angry? No, no, no. I think that no matter what we say to like intervene, you know what? No matter what we say, like from our heart skilled, he's still in an addict mindset right now. So I think that maybe we'll have a better conversation about it when he's like healthy and like sober. He's got interesting face. He has interesting face. <laughs> no, I, I want to say one last thing. Can may I say one last thing? None and of this I, matters. You're in a rehab. I, I, know, I, 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 I know. I'm gonna say one last thing, and I promise you, I'm gonna go into the fucking the movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. I love you. The thing I want to say to you, okay, and this is it, I genuinely love you. I know. And I genuinely think that you have so much fucking talent. And I genuinely, honestly, I genuinely, and I genuinely believe that we, it was a fucking gift that you came into our lives. I agree. Go. Okay? No, never talk to me. Like <laughs> I, won't, I probably won't. <laughs> Do I hope that we could but, but I'm gonna say the that, other way? I what hope. I just said that right now was literally what I feel. I'm glad you put your foot down, Gil. All right? And I, I respect you for doing that. Don't ever do it again. I, you can do it again, Gil. <laughs> okay? And uh, oh, I have a word for you. Go ahead. Interesting. <laughs> it's an name Very of a podcast. No, but I, I hear you. Dude, I thank you. I'm not trying to be. Yeah. I know. I thank you. But, you know, um, I just wish you would, uh, you know, for you to get to the point where you would quit a great situation that we have here, right? That would t- take a little bit more for you to quit, maybe. If you were killing yeah, yourself, manipulative. If you were, <laughs> if you were yeah. killing yourself, so man. If you were killing yourself, oh, it's if manip- manipulation. The movie though, last night, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, her lips. Uh, love. It's like the. It's like Interstellar when he's okay, docking. So, um... <laughs> that kiss. What the. Fuck? <laughs> I had, a, so I had a little terrible little. angle. Cut that part out. You had a terrible angle. <laughs> we that cut that part out. That was so <laughs> twisted. Cut that part this out. Just her teeth. <laughs> That's so twisted. But um, yeah, I really got emotional there, man. I'm sorry, man. I I I I I'm so sorry to all of you, man. I, you know what? The stress that I put you through, bro. Poor George. Poor I think, George. Man. I think it's like he looked but, like Obama at the end of his presidency. No, <laughs> just like seriously. all white hair. Yeah, but I would say the straw at this man. But we were, imagine having to hear it from me, George. Do not let him out of your sight. Rock him to bed. Cradle him. Like, because I was so afraid I couldn't be in Mexico at that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was Kalila. Make sure he's safe. And then Bobby. But, I'm not gonna be but, safe. But, but, you know, <laughs> what? but you know what they would do too? We would have to be at a restaurant, right? I heard about this story. Right, and I'd be like to the waiter. Give me a double margarita. And then Andres. Right, and then Andres in Smash uh, Radical. Dale no alcohol, por favor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Bob as can put I'm those things in As if I'm not going to know what he just said. And then I would look at the guy and go, put it in there. Make it a double. Make it a double, right? Mm-hmm. And then he, it was, it was, there was a lot of combating. But uh, the one time we were at dinner, mm-hmm. and I remember you were being so, um, so concerned. And I remember... I don't know. That's why I wish you would remember. I said something so manipulative at the dinner table, right? I don't know what I said, but it was at that Mexican place or something. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, I don't know what it was, but I want to apologize f- to you for that because I remember that. Anyway, last night, 
So last night I watched a movie. I don't know. I didn't Google if it got good reviews. I didn't Google if anyone liked it. I'd never heard of it before. I hate the franchise. Mm-hmm. Hate the franchise. Resident Evil. Oh, Raccoon the new City. One. Yeah, what I. Is it called? Yeah, so Raccoon City. Is it Raccoon? City? Something like that. Welcome to Raccoon. Welcome City. to Raccoon City. You guys got it right. And I played the original game, but I don't remember it. But I just, it, but it felt like the original game in terms of even the pacing of it. Right? It wasn't, you know, grand like you know the Conjuring's and this and mm-hmm. that. It just felt like all I know is I saw the whole thing, and I never finished those movies. I hate them. I was riveted. I liked it. Anyway, um, I don't know why it took me you would, would you 30 have- minutes to fucking get... <laughs> see, that's the thing. We should have said the Resident Evil thing before we went into this nah, whole fucking diatribe of, of addiction. It ruined that fucking little <laughs> tiny thing, man. <laughs> Fuck! More people are going to watch this movie now. Yeah, But anyway, I, I kind of recommend, but I, maybe I was too high to even, you know, to, you know, um, get it, really. Mm. You know, but um, he does this thing too. Where he'll try okay. to. Uh oh. Jules and I. He's like, "Come on, guys! Like, just the mm. the the bad influence in the house. Let's have a let's have a party." <laughs> Wait, what is, what is definition? I can't party. What is definition of party? I just he, want party party with people. He just wants me and Jules to like get high with him, oh, and it's like that was the other thing. I was at an all expenses paid resort in Mexico. Yeah, I should have been enjoying the whole thing. Oh. I was like, I can't drink in front of Bobby. Oh. I did not drink once. I was like, oh my. Yeah. He's like, double mark. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Double sweat mark. dripping off my face, like yeah. just double sweating. Mark. Like, who says that? Yeah, plus, I don't. Here's here's another thing because, you know. Are you that guy? Double mark? I, I am double mark. Yeah. <laughs> double, yeah. Mark. double mark. Yeah, I'm that guy. But I'm also the kind of guy, because I told you this, is I don't know what beer is. Yeah. Like, because I never drank it. He doesn't know, like, when I my dad, is. My dad drank hard, hard Bud liquor. Light and hard liquor. And hard liquor, but my dad in the garage would have a re- refrigerator filled with Bud Light. Mm. So that's the only one I know, right? So when I go to like a bar, because I've been to maybe four or five bars since I've been out, you know, and they, I go, they go, what would you like? I go, get me whatever on tap. <laughs> I mean, we have a bunch on tap. Tappity tap, <laughs> get whatever you want. Because I don't know what's good. Man. I don't know what the ingredients are. I don't know what mixes with what mix. Like when I order the margarita for the first time, I don't know what it is. You just probably overheard someone say double marg. In movies. Mm-hmm. Like Bloody Mary. I don't know what it is until I had it. And when I had it, I was like, oh, I like a tomato. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't know anything. So I'm like, as a, I'm 50, but I've been sober. I had th- over 30 years of sobriety collectively. Mm-hmm. Right? So in that chunk of time, I'd never drank. Yeah, he's like know. ordering like lemon drops and Jaeger bombs. Yeah, I don't know what, anything. Another thing I like is, and she said it was ghetto, but I thought it was like a high class thing, was those fireballs. <laughs> He's like, what's that cinnamony thing? Yeah, I got it's that so fancy good. fancy. So I go, man, I got a fireball. Ew, I hate, did you wink? Like, I'll take two fireballs. No, I would get, <laughs> no, I would get <laughs> double fire. Yeah, double fire. I would double get, fire. I, I would get, I would double fire it at the ABC. Store, but I would get the little bottles. <laughs> yeah. And I would just get like 10 of them. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but, probably like you're a big spender, like I'll yeah, take ten of these. Yeah, and I would also drink it like this with my finger up. <laughs> yeah, I, mm. <laughs> but like so I don't know what's good. So embarrassed, right? It's embarrassing. And then you mix it with things that like you don't know. You know how they people mix it. So you'll go get like I'll get a Jaeger, and then I'll get like <laughs> pineapple juice and mix it to see what happens. Oof. What? Anyway, I don't know. I don't Jaeger know and how, pineapple. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know how to do it. Right. So I don't know. How, and then um. Can I tell you one thing that happened that was really strange? Okay. This is the strangest thing that's ever happened. And um, I was at a, I was in Brooklyn, babe, and I was at that ja- a Japanese restaurant. The one I sent you to? Yeah. And I was at a bar, and this Japanese girl in a blackout drunk harassed me where they had to kick her out of the restaurant. Why? She was drunk and she would not let me go. She was just hanging on oh, me. Oh no! Okay, I know you are. Oh, she just because you. She Dr- knew who you were. Yeah, dr- drunk and stuff. And they had a, it was the weirdest, grossest, weirdest thing, man. You kind of like it though. It felt. I, I was a little erect. <laughs> erect. I got erect. I got erect half. 
Yeah. But but anyway, um, I'm done. And now, as you're listening, I'm somewhere probably in med- the desert. Meditating, maybe? No, I, you know what I'm probably doing? Yeah, tell yourself what you're doing right now. Right now, at this moment, I'm probably like in, after a session, sitting on a, a rock in the desert. Can I say that? Mm-hmm. A rock in the desert and just sitting there and being introspective. Mm. I love being introspective. Can I tell you what I wish for you? Go ahead. My biggest wish for you is beyond sobriety, is for you to be able to really sit in joy and gratitude. Like, I don't think since I've known you that you've ever just sat down and been like, I really like what I have. I like my life. I love who I am. And I'm really having a good time right now like i've never heard you say those things or i'm thankful or i'm it's it's always uh, okay uh, can i uh, it, if, if, if life was like this okay all right i understand right that this podcast is successful and that that the people listen to it and they love us and we love them i understand that with the bottom of my heart all right i understand you know what i mean bad friends and the fans and, and, and the love. I'm sorry. I forgot what my point of view was going to be. Joy. To live in joy. To have moments of real joy. It seems like you're suffering a lot. That's what I, I know. I, I know what my point of view was. Okay. And I understand that the, the acting jobs I'm getting are, are things that I, I used to pray about and go, please let me be seen in, a, mm. in the, the most elite light that I can be in because I try. Right. And I'm kind of now getting in. Mm-hmm. Right. If that was life, I wouldn't need to use or cope or this and that. But things happen, like in everyone's life, that have nothing to do with, right, your career. It's personal, right? And I've I've had some traumatic events that I personally can't shake. Yeah. I can't shake it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to do it. And if those things didn't happen, I would be still sober. I believe that. From the bottom of my fucking heart, man. Right? So that's the thing. Mm. All right? I understand that my life is great. I understand that I'm so happy that the 30 years of hard work and hanging in there, it's kind of feel like things are happening. But other shit's happening mm. that, I, I, that I'm taking, you know what I mean, personally, and it hurts me. I feel it. and I can't. I, I obsess about it. And it hurts. So I'm going to deal with those things as well. Hmm. I want to go in there and deal with how to cope with all of it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how. And um, it's a comedy podcast. It's not going there. But, you know, I think this should be real, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Any other movie reviews? <laughs> <laughs> Your cleanliness is a reflection of you, oh. especially below the belt. You guys all know that I love to shave my nut sacks. Yep. And you also know that my nut sacks are prime jewels. Mm-hmm. And I don't want nicks and scrapes. Valuable. Right? So I have to use product, this product, Ballsy, because this is the best product in the market. Okay? That's why you got to check out Ballsy. They make men's products for man parts, the groin area. It's no secret that your balls are prone to odor, sweat, and irritation. So yeah. upgrade your ball games with Ballsy. They make quality, long-lasting products formulated to keep you fresh, comfortable, and confident. Sack Pack. The Sack Pack is the ultimate trifecta of products specifically formulated to take care of your most prized possession. And not sure what, where to start? You can take a quiz, my friends. Oh. Take their quiz to get a customized system tailored to your personal situation. Also, the stuff is made in the U.S. of A. All Ballsy personal care Uh products are proudly produced in the U.S.A. and always will be. So keep the funk off your junk. Right now, if you go to ballwash.com slash tigerbelly20 and put in promo code tigerbelly20, you'll receive 20% off. That's 20% off when you go to ballwash.com slash tigerbelly20 and put in promo code tigerbelly20. Buy it. Helix for your sleep. Nervous about buying a mattress online? Please don't. Okay. Because we have a solution for you. The only solution for you. Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep has over 12,000 five-star reviews for a reason. My brother, Stevie Weeby, Mm -hmm. right, loves Helix Sleep. My mother loves Helix Sleep. Their two-minute sleep quiz matches you with the mattress that's a perfect fit. 
Plus, you have 100 nights to try it out risk-free. That's amazing. Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why on earth would you buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. Everybody's unique, and Helix knows that. So they're having several different mattresses models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattresses are great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. Mattresses are great for spi spinal alignment to prevent morning aches and pains. And even a Helix Plus mattress for plus-size sleepers. Eric? <laughs> <laughs> it's, he loves it, though. His back loves is right. it. I took the Helix quiz and I was matched with the Midnight mattress because mm. I wanted something medium and also because I'm a side sleeper. So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress that you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. You don't need to go to the mattress store ever again. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. Just go to helixsleep.com slash belly. Try it out for 100 nights risk-free. Once again, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash belly. That's up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows at helixsleep.com slash belly. Don't you have some good hacky airline clips? <laughs> okay, before Can we segue into the in a, in a normal way, in a better way? Though? This is something Bobby wanted to talk about, but he was self conscious because he feels it's no, like, no, I don't want to talk about it. We gotta do even, we get, we get, that's an even no, no, for, all right. First of all, we got to segue into it without you know what I mean? The way I said it, the way no, we got to segue in, into it where it's more organic into it, you know what I mean? I think the way I said was perfect. Yeah, I think that, was, <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. Uh, the way that was a great, class. all right, you're right. <laughs> Oh, God, he's going to kiss, kiss my teeth again. again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, get in there, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that reminds me, when I was flying back from Mexico, there was this couple next to me that was making out, and it was so annoying on the like, on the flight oh, uh, back from Mexico. You oh, know? It was a segue. Who no. was it? It was you, and yeah. you were making out with someone? No, that's a terrible no, I was segue. On my own flight, and, I, I, you know, <laughs> yours is way better. You know what I mean? But um, it's tricking this candle, George. Okay. Uh, yeah, I feel great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, the problem with, I have hangups about the airline and flying a lot, but I don't talk about it in my act or in podcasts because there's certain topics, right, in comedy. I, I don't know if the layman would know this, but I think pe generally people do, though, yeah. that there's certain topics that are hacky. Sure. In, in, in just, right? What's up with TSA these days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. or oh, I'm driving. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, you know what I mean? I'm in LA driving. You know, yeah. I, 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 why is everything like Jerry Seinfeld? But that's because <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because observational humor, right? He was the first. His generation of guys was with the first guys to do that. He invented pretty much observational humor. That's why when you do observational, it always sounds like Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah. And that's why Sebastian Maniscalco, right? Jerry Seinfeld loves Sebastian. They're like this, right? Because Se Jerry knows that Sebastian is a protege mm -hmm. of observational comedy. And I believe that Sebastian has taken that style of comedy to the next level. But it's not as if Sebastian does hacky material. He doesn't. But what I'm saying is, is that there are certain observational jokes that are just Difficult to talk about. But I, okay, maybe we'll not present it in the way that's I'm talking dokey. about it. I'm talking about it now. Just tell us your hangups. What do you hate about it? I have a million of them, okay? That's okay. so many. I have a million of them, all right? You take, I, I think I've already talked about it though. No, there's one that you're really pissed off about that you haven't stopped talking about in two weeks. <sighs> Damn, two weeks on one thing. If I, okay, if I have the window, mm -hmm. okay, that's, I control that. I'm the light control, <laughs> right? You want to watch your movie? Too bad. I'm light guy, right? Light guy. And if you want to get, you want to control the fucking, get, you sit next to the fucking window, right? Mm. Yeah. And if you reach over into my fucking space, if I had a machete, you would not have an arm. <laughs> okay, because I'm telling you, I've had taken naps on fucking planes yeah. and seen... <laughs> the window open. You wake up. It, like, my eyes open. Hold on, you're in by the window. I'm right, right, right. You. Yeah. You're this asleep. is me. I'm sleeping. Right? <laughs> you made that look to. Sleep. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> and I've got, I'm taking a nap, sir. That's so funny. I'm taking a nap, sir. But what about when, like, here's another quip I, quip I have. I promise you this. Have you been to a lake? Yeah. You know the law game? Yeah, the one you're running on the log. Right. I guarantee you, you put me on a log with any airline, what do you call them, attendant? Flight attendant. Flight attendant, right? I have better balance than all of them. Guaranteed. So if there's a little turbulence and they have the seatbelt sign on, right? And my seatbelt sign on, they're standing. They're going, oh, excuse me, sir, right? Bitch, I have better balance than you. Why are you sitting with fucking seatbelt on? Because I can do better than you. Don't tell me what to do. You you're th- standing. So you're saying you should. I have a better skill set in terms of balance. <laughs> what is your brain? So you're saying at? because he has a lower center of gravity because he's. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what I wanted to say. By yeah. virtue of him being a really short man, he wants the right to get up at any time during turbulence. Because I'm not going to fucking fall over. It right? does seem like they're acting sometimes. Right? Yeah. Do you it, not, I've never met anyone who has sh- tripped and fallen on their belly more than you. Okay. Can I have one? Damn, I, very thank good. Thank you. Point. We'll talk about that the next. <laughs> but can I say my last quip? Okay. I'm going hacky, okay? Yeah. Right? Don't ask, right? If you're seeing in the emergency exit row as a stewardess, as, as an airline attendant, mm-hmm. right? Flight attendant, right? Don't ask me, excuse me, this is the emer- emergency airline. I, I had to, by law, ask you, mm. in. In an emergency, are you able to open that door, mm-hmm. right? What does everyone say? They nod yes. They lie. Oh. They can't do it. Do I can't do it. You're not going to be able I to I look do at it. That, that pamphlet all day long and I'm like, how am imagine. I going to do this? Pull in. <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> imagine. In. Imagine. And you're taking a nap. Yeah. Engines go out. It's going straight down to the ocean, mm-hmm. right? Chaos. <sighs> I, I want to scream. <sighs> Chaos, yeah. right? Look at the door. People are going, c- climbing on top of each other. Wait. Wait. You think that's not- that that's what the door is for? So when <laughs> the plane is going down, you kick it open? It's when for it a- lands. It's only for a water landing. I know. Once it lands. Not even the air. Oh, I thought you were going to be hell of like. Ah! I thought- <laughs> <laughs> Everybody <laughs> go. <laughs> open it. Right? And then what? The door opens and I do a fucking, <laughs> a fake fly? For fucking three hours? They just fly. Oh, dude, it lands first, bitch. Oh, okay. Okay. You mean, you we're mean, drowning, bitch. It's Das Boot. Like this skydiving. Bro, we're in the ocean, right? We got to open it before it goes to the bottom of the ocean. No, right? no, no. It's supposed to, the plane will, will float. Oh, really? So if a lightning... Yeah, we think. We think. <laughs> Let's say that a lightning strikes it, breaks oh, the hole open a little bit. You never know what happens in the yeah. sky. You never know what's going to happen in the sky. All I know is you're not going to be able to open that door. <laughs> you lied. You lied to the fucking airline lady. Dude, there's some old people. That I'm like, Ugh. There's no way there's they can no, do it. There's no way. But there's two or th- usually and one. With the lever. <coughs> We're dead. <coughs> yeah. There. There's one or two other people on that aisle who could probably assist. It doesn't matter because also uh, I'm, in the, I'm in the window. Yeah. She asked me, right? Really? You want me to? I'm passed out. You're sleeping. <laughs> no. Through the you, trauma? <laughs> through the trauma of it? I, you just. <laughs> I'm out. So now I'm just something you have to, another obstacle you have to get through. <laughs> you make it harder. I make it it's 10 hard, times harder. harder. Now you have to put this fat uh, Korean dude. Some guy. There's yeah. a fat Korean walk down. He, he died. <laughs> I don't know how he died. It's a lump of meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a chaos, right? <sighs> um. But you know, you know, I've 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 always had problems because I'm there all the time. Yeah. So I get annoyed. Here's another thing. Don't have fuck. This is stupid. But um, just shut down clear if it's empty. The air. Clear the security line. Yeah, that's all. That's my last thing. I love clear. Yeah, but sometimes you do clear, but the other the line regular line is so much shorter. Yeah. That's right. True. So it clear. Global I, 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 I want to let people know what clear is. Global entry is better. So cl- yeah. So what Global clear, entry is the best. See, if you go to a major airline, like, you know, airport, they have this thing called clear, which is you pay um, a yearly a yearly fee. And basically, you put your fingers on there or your, they scan your eyes. And you don't have to go through the give them your passport and all that. And you can get a cut in line. It's mm-hmm. like going, if you're TSA pre-check. Yeah, it's, it's a great convenience. It's the same. But when there's no one at the airport, they're still open. So I still do clear. 
but then all my friends are already at the gate, and I'm still doing the retina Why do you thing. do clear? Because you want to show your money? Yes! It's so expensive. It's an elitist thing. Like 500 years. Right? So I'm, I have to do the elitist thing when I can do the normal line, but I have to let people know I have clear. <laughs> <laughs> You're waiting for an hour in the line. So I'll wait an hour to do the retina thing. <laughs> okay? So, so that's my last um, qualm. So when it's dead, close it down, clear. I'll just go to the regular line. Uh, <laughs> like, it, and then the that's, that's do you have any qualms? Uh, Airport? Yeah. Except for being there with me. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can't be a qualm. I think this. Um, my only um I actually have a very controversial statement. I don't think more legroom is a plus for someone that I think that you should stop passenger shaming people who have to sleep like me on the plane. How do you, uh, because I am unable. I don't, I can't breathe well for some reason. Like when I sleep just like this, mm. like I feel like I'm not breathing well. So I have to sort of tilt my body to the side, not facing the person next to me. And I scrunch my knees like this. And it's actually better um, when they say like, oh, premium economy, right? So you have more leg room. I hate it because then my leg keeps sliding down. So when I'm smashed up and the seat in front of me is like this, then I can really just cocoon. But all I'm saying is, if you see me sleeping like this, you shouldn't shame me for it. No one's ever fucking shame Yes, they do. You they take photographs. No, they stuff. haven't. Oh, do you see people they, holding cameras? Walking by you taking photos? I've never seen that, baby. Because it's like... I'm not sleeping an appropriate way like all people should. And I'm so uncomfortable like this. Yeah. I have to bring my knees up. or I, I, don't, I can't feel but, like but I'm not Kalila, breathing. You think that I, when I sleep, my, my sleeping isn't for my comfort either. My sleeping is to make myself look cute when people pass me by. Really? Yeah. How do you do it? I do, I'd yeah, rather... Teach us right now. Dude, I'm more like... Bro, I'm more like... Like this. You put both legs up? Yeah, and I'm more like... <laughs> But the mask fucks it up. Yeah. Oh, so they can't see the, the juiciness of the face. I have found another qualm. <laughs> what is it? I was going to Hawaii, and I, I was in first class, so I was in a bed. You know the bed? I, I've it, never done one. So when you're in a first class, sometimes your bed, your chair it's turns into a flat. bed. You can lie yeah. down, yeah. So you can lay down flat, right? So I laid down flat, and I went to the side. So a sleeping side. So you're in your own cubicle, basically. Mm -hmm. So you're, there's no one next to you. Mm -hmm. And you're on your side. I had my mask on. I'm sleeping. And while I'm sleeping, this is what I see. It, it, I, she almost lost her fingers. <laughs> Somebody almost lost their fingers. I was a non pitch. Don't scare me like that. So I closed my eyes. And this stewardess went like this. She went. Flight attendant. Flight attendant. She went. She touched your mask while you were sleeping? To put it a little bit over my nose a little bit more. But while you were sleeping? While I was sleeping. And I almost did this. <laughs> like a nom. I feel that's a bit. No. No, no. That's my gut instinct. No, her, on her part. No, on her part. That's crazy. Could maybe wake you up. She no longer was, was going to have the ability to play the piano. I feel like you made that up. What do you mean? I don't think any flight There's no way. did she, that. You, no, she did do that. She did? Yeah. Now, here's the thing. How far was it down? <laughs> okay, we'll see that. If it was a little bit. All right, if it was, uh, it was maybe to here. So my mouth and my nose was exposed. And he was probably sleeping. Was that like, okay? <sighs> Were you sleeping unmasked? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't like spitting and coughing. Yeah. Oh, I think, yeah, I think maybe I didn't have a mask <laughs> and she put a mask on my face. Also, he like coughed. <laughs> I think that's what it was. He coughed the <laughs> whole flight. Yeah, yeah, first class. Oh, then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's a cougher. He just coughs, coughs, coughs. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, I'm, you know, I'm on day six with no cigarettes. You replaced it with tall boys. Tall boys, <laughs> but oh my god! But can I go back to why this is this is a, <laughs> this is a fundamental reason? I'm, I'm going back to the addiction part. <laughs> uh, this is the fundamental. Reason, this is one of the reasons why I'm going to is this insanity. Okay, mm. is trying to smoke enough, like try to find the right amount of cigarette level and weed level, right? The right amount of dosage. So that I don't feel like I'm about to die. Right. Right. So every day you're kind of, and it got to the point where it's like, I have to quit one or the other. I just quit smoking cigarettes. If not, I would have, I my lungs would have collapsed. It was terrible. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, this is the most kisses I've seen on this podcast in one sitting. Cloud yeah, because I'm it. vulnerable. I know. And I'm scared. I get vulnerable and scared, but, um, <laughs> yeah. You want to do drive, driving quips? 
<laughs> so I'm just Let's do a hacky fucking. <laughs> let's do one hack fucking. What is it? It's, it's planes driving. Wait, I'm supposed to do from um, the girls on Trash Juice. Well, on Trash Juice, we decided that one life skill, even though I don't even think it's a real life skill, that I'm supposed to accomplish in 2022 is mm. to do three minutes on stage. Yeah. So give me. You gotta. You're my guy. Give me the meat and potatoes. Where do I start? George can be your partner on the open mic. Ooh, futon jokes. Well, all right, let's. let's <laughs> they are great. Right. Would... This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Check out BetterHelp.com/belly for ten percent off your first month. Life is full of stressors. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have. Your life is probably stressful. Mm. And even if you may not be feeling down and out and depressed or like you're at a total loss, if your stress is high, your temper is shorter than usual, or even if you're starting to feel strain on any of your relationships, you could probably use the chance mm. to unload. Mm. And we've talked about this a million times, yeah. and we love talking about it because BetterHelp is something that we participate in, and we just think it's the best online therapy. It's affordable. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. Um, it really is a great service, and we recommend it to everybody. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Unload the stressors and get some unbiased feedback. You'd be pretty surprised at what you might gain from it, and see if it's for you. The podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Tiger Belly listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash belly. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash belly for 10% off your first month. Sandu. Ooh. What is that? Sports book. Oh. You know, guys, um, I love to bet. I love sportings. I love sporting events. Yeah. I love UFC. I love soccer. And I love the football. You love LA Rams. I love the LA Rams, and they're going to win the Super Bowl. And you're going to put your money in. I'm going to put my money in. And I'm going to use FanDuel Sportsbook because they're the most reliable. Okay. FanDuel Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 56. Go to babe. celebrate, new customers can bet $5 to win $280 in cash on either team to win when you use promo code BELLY when registering. Very good. Yes! That's right. You'll get winning. No, <laughs> sorry. That's right. You'll get your winnings. In cold, hard cash, because we know cash is always better than free bets. Guys, there's no better place to bet Super Bowl 56 than FanDuel Sportsbook. Don't miss your chance to turn $5 into $280 in cash. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app and use promo code BELLY to make every moment more this Super Bowl. Again, promo code BELLY exclusively on FanDuel Sportsbook. 21 over present Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, or West Virginia. New users only. $10 for supplies required. Must wager in designated offer market. Max bonus $280. Bonus for Tennessee users fulfilled in site credit within 72 hours. Tennessee site credit expires 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Any problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Virginia. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. 1-877-8-H-O-P-E-N-Y or text HOPE-NY-467369 in New York. TN Redline 1-800-889-9789 in Tennessee or visit www.1800gambler.net in West Virginia. They are great. How about us three? How about this? How about this? Let's do play this game. Uh-huh. Okay. Gilbert, George, and I, right, we're a new company. All right? Okay. And what we do is we create an act, right? We write jokes for new comedians. Oh, God. Right? That are, she's not just an, because Kaleida's at a different point where she could literally like tomorrow go, you know, I want to play of a 1,200 seat venue by myself in Austin. She probably will sell out. <laughs> People would come. She would sell out. So she could sell out a theater, for a three, smaller theater on minutes, her own. Three minutes. So she's <laughs> not like a new comic, but she's in a different thing. She already has a fan base, right? Yeah. So we that's what our company is. Our company is people that already have a fan base that want to do the road, we come up with an act, right? So welcome, welcome, Kalila. My name is Benjamin. Oh, so I'm meeting with you. I'm, I'm yeah. going to see whether or not I'm going to hire you as my people. I'm Benjamin Prolongo. I used to be a late night uh, talk show writer for Seth oh, Meyers. Oh, so nice to meet you, Mr. And, Prolongo. Well, I'll just give you my little, um, you know, I mean, background. Yeah, you know, I wrote for SNL for a couple of years. The, the good years with uh, Spade and all those guys. They never bumped you up to in front of the camera. Nah, I'm not really on screen. I'm more of a writer. I, I, I like focusing on people's point of view. Anyway, we got uh, introduced to the other writers. Go ahead. Uh, Philip Humbert, I uh, wrote for the idea <laughs> Philip, for five years Philip, in um, uh, for, Chicago. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Humbert. I, I, Philip, I, Philip, tell them how we met. Uh, you we were I? working on... Oh, yeah, we were working on uh, 
Cars 5. <laughs> it hasn't come out yet. It's, uh, it's oh, a great I one. I love that franchise. It's edgier. Yeah. Because he had an j- edgier... <laughs> he created a car in... In Cars, in, in Cars 5, created a, You know what I mean? It's basically uh, one of those old-timey, like, World War II, you know, war trucks yeah, from yeah, America. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. He made them in... He gave it a German accent, mm-hmm. right? One of those World War II mm-hmm. war trucks. And it's got... We got to come sort of like an edgy... You know what I mean? But Hitler the, vibed. It's, it's yeah, you gotta kind of get Hitler, Hitler vibe. He has a little Toronto's mustache. You know, the mu- anyway. You know how there's big cars and little cars? Yeah, yeah. Like, how do they get created? So we had, like... We well, did that. Anyway, next writer, go ahead. Cars. Like, hey, bro. You're done? Uh, my name's Kumar Patel. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Kumar. I used to work for... Uh, you know Hassan Minaj? <laughs> yeah, we love Hassan. Love Hassan. Hassan Minaj. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We are brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, we got him from England, man. This guy's a great writer from England. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did uh, Eddie Ift. I love Eddie Ift. Who's Eddie? Oh, yeah, I love Eddie. Not Eddie Ift. Uh, um, oh, no, I thought you were making Eddie, up. Eddie, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. Eddie who? who? The real comedian. Eddie Izzard. Oh, Eddie Izzard. 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 Yeah, uh, and Eddie Ift. Yes. Yeah, so he's great. So anyway, what we do is we bring in talent, right? So mm-hmm. we ask you questions, first of yeah. all, just to see who you are. Mm-hmm. We think the he had a great idea, but, you know, a point of view for you. Okay. Right? All right. I'd love to hear it. Right. Um, um, but yeah, hit us with it, Humbert. What do, we, what do you think of this? Hippie, Filipino, feminist, point of view, right? But you only fight for the rights, your point of view, female rights for islanders. So I That's hate all other Asians. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. That's your point of view. You're repping, rep, but you're the hip girl. You're the hip. I, imagine Moana, right? I see it now. Punky Brewster. I see it now. <laughs> Yeah, Mohana, Punky Mo- Brewster. Mo- Mo- Mohana. Punky <laughs> Brewster. Punky Brewster. Right? And basically, your edge. Okay. Th- you're on an island. There's a Starbucks. There's a mall, right? We're modern here, baby. Right? You work at a kiosk. Love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, 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 it could be anything. What is it? CBD? The kiosk? Are we yeah. working on my material, or is this a, a movie I'll, you're making? I'll be honest. I feel like he's working on his material. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> we're, we're, no, we're just writing well, your history. Okay. Right. Should we just ask him what our history? Right. Right. So anyway, so <laughs> what do malls and cars? So have we, to what do? We, 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 I don't know, but what we, what we believe is the opening, your opening first minute, should be self-deprecating because you're a beautiful uh, woman. So we believe that you should dress down. So I have a point we've to actually, make about that. We've actually pulled out a chart. I some think analytics. that self-deprecation jokes are a little bit too um, uh, late nineties. That's interesting. But late nineties is back. Late nineties is back in. in. It, everything's cyclical. Yes. Okay. Writing is cyclical, number one. And also, number two, we had Sarah Silverman. No one's going to believe a self-deprecating self-deprec- joke from me. Okay, anyway. We've also rep writing. That's a negative attitude. And we, we might, maybe that could be like an edgier self-deprecating. Yeah. Negative, like a negative self. You're pretty negative. Yeah, yeah. We like that. But my I'd point- like to kind of um, lean towards more of like She's a not- delusion. She wants a Rather delusion. Rather than self-deprecation. All right, let's hear your first joke about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, No, no, no. That, that's what I'm hiring you guys oh, for. Oh, for a delusion. Oh, you're delusional, Show right? Show me delusion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I get it. I, why don't we do this? I'm an, you're open, I'm an African princess. I love it. Let's, I'm an African princess. No, actually, let's change the wording to, you open up the stage, here's Kalila, and you go, the Nubian princess is here. Okay. That'd right? be great. In fact, the... The do, set, I, do I need to do it just like... Do this. Set, just have parakeets on your arms. And I propose this. I propose the, us two. Why did your accent change, bro? Sometimes I go in and out. <laughs> okay, man. I believe that you and I, you know, basically... You, you have, we shared a flat. We, 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 yeah. this, in London. It's London. <laughs> <laughs> London. We stay in a flat. London. London. And we... Uh, From London. But also him and I, we did also a two-man show. Yeah. About... Uh, we, we do, Pharaoh. Remember the Pharaoh two-man show we did? Oh, the good old Pharaoh. The Pharaoh two-man yeah. So basically... We Enough. Almost- First place French you, Festival 2019. You, you go Enough with here. the credits, boys. Give me the meat. <laughs> you go up there as the Pharaoh uh, princess, right? We come up as Pharaoh, your psychic. We do a little dance. Higher critical flight. See how we put ourselves into this act? Put it... You open that way, right? Your opening line is like, you know what I mean? Fuck Nubian princesses. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right? I'm the real one. Guan? Guan. Guan. <laughs> I, I, I'm a phoenix. I'm a phoenix. I'm a phoenix. I've been reborn. They rise. Right? right? And then one self, do a joke about your nose. <laughs> so we actually, pulled, we actually pulled the chart up. Yeah, yeah. And the chart. How about this, I think, how, I think how, what, about the, what about this joke? You know what I mean? Welcome to my one woman, my, my one woman show. If you want to see the rest of my nose, I, I rented out the next theater. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we're all about here. I think I'm That's gonna, what we're all about, about here. That, you know what I mean? I, 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 how about, what about this one? It's like you will put out a gigantic close-up mouth of david letterman absolutely then look at your mouth yep and we'll do a game of like which one is kalila which one is david, david letterman. letterman 
It's interactive. Yeah, the, ga- the gap about. between the teeth. What TikToks. Think? think about TikTok. What about this? Oh, because I have oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That went over my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I get it. David Letterman has a gap between her teeth. It's a gap. We'll yeah. do a little game like that. And then the third right? Madonna, picture. Madonna, yeah. David Letterman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Madonna could be one. And the third picture is yeah. Grand Canyon. And guess what? <laughs> the Grand Canyon. And, and guess what? Grand, that's funny. This is my that's vagina? Funny. Hello, hello. <laughs> that's your teeth. Uh, uh, oh. Sweetheart, sweetheart, we were right there. That's five yeah, minutes. That's a, oh, that's five minutes right she there. She also oh, just oh. admitted she has a loose vagina. We, she just said that. Oh, right uh, we could do a jackass thing. We could, we could dangle. We can dangle explosive little devices off of your, off of your wings. You may call them wings. Are you doing the IUD thing again? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's too. Is that too? Is that too? Uh, Desert Storm. Use that for our last two clients. <laughs> Every <laughs> female client. Yeah, yeah that's that. right. That was two Desert Storms. So. Mr. Humbert. I feel like you haven't really contributed to this discussion. Let's see if his accent changes. Uh, well, I'm a more of an internal person. I uh, write down the ideas. Uh, Humbert, Humbert. Uh, Jesus. Humbert, where's your accent? Humbert, do the accent. Humbert, Humbert. where's your accent? Be your true self. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. We, did, we were flatmates as well. Uh, <laughs> there we go, Humbert. Thank you. Back five years ago. You went to Oxford? Yes. Did you not go to Oxford? Oh, yes. I was part yeah, yeah. of the, uh, the rowing team at right. Oxford. And he, was the, he also worked at, <laughs> on the bench for the Liverpool um, FC. FC, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Were you um, Salah's um, assistant? Yes, yes, I was yeah. assisted Salah. Uh, made sure he had his chairs. Yeah. His, his, his uh, grooming his kit boots. because he's a hairy fella. Mo? Yeah. Can I say something about um, Human? Are we done with this? Can I talk about Human real quick? Okay. I've got no help. <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, okay. my bad, my bad. We'll, we'll have I broke character. Yeah, I wrestled. So the nose, next theater. So we, the, we, the Letterman thing, we could do that. So what are all the body parts about her that we can yeah. make fun of? I'm thinking... Um, are you, do you uh, have, like, excess water anywhere? Like, does there, like... Uh, does you right. have... uh, excess of water. That basically, I did read that. So mm-hmm. we could do a shape of water thing. But we don't need special effects because your body does it as organically. I see what Again, <laughs> your body Post does it okay. Okay. love that word love right? that word a lot bro. so basically what we do is we put a little bit of stress in you bro, yeah. right because I know that's when you sweat absolutely bro we take your shoes off the, it, the crowd we would have to put because you, you have so much excess of water the crowd would have to have raincoats and you know like it's a Gallagher show yeah <laughs> instead of like smashing instead of smashing a watermelon yeah right basically you take your socks off you stick them in front of the audience and you your, spray them with your fucking foot juice. Absolutely. Oh, they were saying her pussy juice. No, they're her foot juice. Because my Grand Canyon pussy. Exactly. And that's why we like combining the jokes. We, meet, we could get put tattoos of the presidents inside one of the vaginal walls. Oh, Rushmore? <laughs> yeah, we'll put fucking Lincoln up there. I feel like you're... <laughs> I feel like your face is not really into this. Yeah, I feel like you want to use a different company. <laughs> I feel like you want to work with real. So let's, let's so, so, since the jokes that we have now, all right, the act, let's put it on our feet. <laughs> Go ahead, Kalani. <laughs> Pick what we gave you. I think we should put it on our feet. Yeah. So, um, with what? With all the things we've said the newbie and peanut uh-huh. princess, the jokes that we wrote. Why don't you the, try let's it? Let's just see how it comes out. Yeah, with, your the, with the your Letterman. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so here we Next go. Next episode. Ladies, no, ladies. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, right? Sit down, sit down. Ding, 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 right? Yeah. Do who should be the announcer? <laughs> straight from. <laughs> just tell me about women. Straight, straight from. <laughs> Oh, that you put bleep that out. Say it straight from Los Angeles, California. Yeah. The Nubian princess. Kulala Kun. She's playing with the silence. That's good. That's good. She's doing what George Lopez does. Yeah, she's like, You know how George Lopez doesn't say anything for five minutes? All right. Okay. Maybe start with some crowd work. The band, get the band, to, get the band to play the music. They're not here yet. The band's not here. Not here. Well, why the fuck did we stop that show? Okay. Um, you go up. Okay. You must go up. Once again, the Nubian Queen. <laughs> <laughs> the band's here. The, the band's here. The band's here. Start over. Say the Nubian. I'll, I'll tell the band what to play. Yeah. Say, the Nubian- the band's here. <laughs> The Nubia oh. Queen. <laughs> the Nubia Queen. Is it my go? <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God, baby, I don't think you should do it. 
I don't think we. Should, I don't think you should do. I don't it. think you guys are the ones for me. Get a different writer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. We tried. We really tried our best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do it. My first time improvising that long with George. It was interesting. You know what, dude? Your improv is bad. better. It's not bad. Yeah, I think that the accent could have come a little sooner. Like read it. Yeah. Right? Because you knew that was a thing. So we were kind of <laughs> anticipating when that thing was going to happen. You didn't do it. We had to tell you to do it. <laughs> we're judging. I was so your by the first. Uh... Your instinct was wrong about that. But other than that, I think that your improv skills is much better. I think Juliana's getting better as an improv Good. improviser. Oh, she's, oh I'm yeah. thinking Crushing of getting her an improv class. Maybe her and Andres and uh, oh, an improv great. class together. An improv class? Together. Be I mean, they're all online at UCB, but. I think it'd be hilarious. I think it'd be great. I Im think she would Im learn Im a lot. me right now. What? Go ahead. Say something. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what, what kind of improv is minutes it? doing that? Improv with me right now. We but should you know have a 30-minute scenario on improv. You, <laughs> but you know what? You, you know what? I could do that. Go. You could do this. You, you, how about this? You're doing a TED Talk. This is the topic. Do it now. Okay, yeah. Oh, you start yeah, the TED yeah. Talk. But you have to give me the topic. But then you have to do one. All right. Aquaculture. Good evening. My name is Dr. Feinstein Androge, and I'm here for a TED Talk for aquaculture. And I'm his partner, Marlene. No, you're doing your own TED Talk. Oh, no, we're doing it. <laughs> no, we're, no, no, no. to... we're doing it. I'm Marlene. You can't rely on my TED Talk to fucking launch onto my. You have to launch your own TED Talk. No, we're partners in this TED Talk. <laughs> See, did... Love the improv she's here. Fucking Howard already, she's denying hey, it. Kalala goes, you both did. You both did. I did not you started the denial. I know, but the. Oh, all you did start the denial. All right, all right, all right. How about this? All right, you did start. All right, all right. I'll, I'll I'll do it again. Right, I will do it again. Right, you can be my partner. Yeah, you can be my partner. Oh, right, God. but give me a different topic. Come on, just think whatever you. So go, did. you give it to me right now. TED Talk, well, give me. All right, uh, why Prius is better than Tesla? All right. Hi, name is my name is James Baldwin, the senior. Hello. And okay. Thank you. Myself. Oh. And and um, um, and go ahead. <laughs> and start. <laughs> And I'm Dr. Marlene Wing Wong. Wow. <laughs> Wing Wong. Dr. Marlene Wing Wong, Wing Wong. <laughs> is here. So, um, as you know, right, electricity is the future. And let me tell you something right now. When the foundation is etched in stone mm. and we know when the future is in place, we have now two models of cars. Mm. What's better? And one, some would say that I would be considered a human hybrid. I've been electrocuted for most of my early life, uh, growing up in the Philippines with poor wiring. Oh, look, she has to do it on her own, I think. What do you mean? The, I, I'll tell you why. The rely, it, <laughs> Did the you just stop the, the scenario? Com the comedy's not there. You know I, what? You're a pussy. I'm not <laughs> a pussy. You have to do it on your own. Why? Calm it's pussy. funnier because it, for you, the struggle is where the comedy is. <laughs> okay. The struggle is where the comedy is. Okay. Are you okay. sweating, by the way, Clara? No. Yeah. Wow. So why don't we try Marlene try Wing one? Wong is a fucking brain. We love, we love Marlene Wing Wong, right? <laughs> so Marlene Wing Wong is going to do her own TED Talk. Okay. All right? I just want you to commit to it. Okay. For it will, if it doesn't work, we'll cut it out, okay? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Dr. Marley Wing Wong in the topic of... Telekinesis. Yep. Okay. <sighs> play the band. Play the <laughs> 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 Let me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Baby, thank it's you already so lost. Let's <laughs> get into it. You can dive right into it, baby. <laughs> you know what? That's you. I like to take a moment of silence. I like okay. to take a breath. All right, good. Fine, that's good. She, she has to think about what she has to say, which no. is, goes against the... the, the I'm not time. thinking! Uh, okay, go ahead. Dude, <laughs> most, intense, <laughs> most intense improv class I've ever been part of. All right, how long Someone, do you need? Okay, no, that's it. I'm here. I'm Marlene Wing Wong. You got, thank ladies you, ladies and gentlemen. And gentlemen please, thank you for coming please, to this TED Talk. Uh, okay. Wait, you know what? There's, <laughs> the, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. The, I, is that, that Mr. Wing Wong? What's going on? <laughs> I have this little earpiece that I have here, and my husband, Mr. Wing Wong, this is what she's doing. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I, I, I am, I'm quitting. You're not letting me. You're not no, letting me shine. Let's, let's you're not do, letting let's, me let's shine. Let's do it now. Let's nope, it now. that's it. I quit. Marlene out. You know what? Telekinesis, everybody. Telekinesis, guys. I kind of like how that went. I'm okay. Oh, and I know what it is. The crowd has telekinesis. They got the whole fucking thing through oh, their minds. That's what I was gonna say. Oh, that's what you were gonna say. Yes. <laughs> that's what you were gonna say. I bitch. literally I was gonna it. no. I said it, bitch. I was literally Whose gonna open like that? this. <laughs> I was literally gonna open like this. 
most of you in here think that you've come here on your own accord, on your own free will. But I'm here to tell you that I have gotten you into those seats. And if you would have done that when we told you to do it, Why? it would have been fucking you, brilliant. You interrupted me. Anyway, anyway, I love you. Good job. Suck it. Oh, but you know what? <laughs> but you know what? You guys, I think, I honestly believe that in 2022, we we want to get Kalila on the road. Doing what, though? Do, Three minutes of stand-up, it's easy. I, can I just not do stand-up? Because like, that's one, a one weird show. thing. I can do something else. Storytelling would be great. I could tell stories. I just don't want to write jokes and do the setup and then you know wait for them to laugh like that. That's just not up my yeah. alley. Kalila doing spoken word would also make me laugh. Like, imagine be, if I just read my funny. emo poems. <laughs> do you have any on you? Oh, you know what would be funny, too, is if we go, hey, guys, I don't have an act, but a bunch of fans wrote me jokes. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, yeah, that'd I be a funny that. thing. Oh, and then you're is just... that a new uh, a new uh, format? We have fans write jokes for Kalila to say at the end of yeah. the episode. Yeah, that's and then joke. oh, that's funny. right. And then she has to stand and do it though. Uh huh. And then if you sit right reading jokes that fans write, uh -huh. some of them will legitimately get a laugh. Yeah. Land. And then you'll put that in your arsenal. Okay, good. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. New segment. But guys, we're talking. We're being serious, right? Mm -hmm. So don't do like give her good ones. Give her really think it through. Real mm -hmm. comedy writing jokes. And if we use it in her act, we have to do this. Mm. We have to do this. We'll pay you a hundred bucks. Yeah. If we so use if the you joke. write a joke and it works, and she ultimately uses it in the act that she has, and we'll do it through um, a handshake or a wink or you know what I mean. Imagine we promise. If I, if I get a Netflix special on other, other people's, people's jokes, jokes. oh, so before good. me, before you, <laughs> <laughs> using other people's jokes. Did her stage name? I'd be in another rehab. Start. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are not a rehab. Anyway, unhelpful advice, go ahead. Unhelpful advice with Bobby and Kalila. All right. Uh, dear Tiger Belly, my husband and I are from New Zealand, and we have been massive Tiger Belly fans from the very beginning. My husband and I have been together for 15 years since I was 19 years old. And ever since I've known him, he's always showing his butt crack in public when he mm, bends over. That guy. It can be anywhere. We will be at the supermarket shopping in public. He will bend over to pick something up or tie his shoelaces and a big ass crack will be exposed and it's not hard to miss. I'm always embarrassed and I've seen people notice and look embarrassed and not know where to look. I'm always telling him to pull up his pants, but he just doesn't care. He's not embarrassed. No fucks given. I've noticed Bobo from time to time uh, will expose his butt crack. With all due respect to our slept king, he has nothing on my husband's big ass ass crack i love my husband and think he's cute but his butt crack situation needs to be stopped mm. what should i do to help this situation surgery <laughs> is that him that's him uh, he's also wearing a tiger belly shirt shout out to you sir yeah yeah okay. that's a lot of ass that's crack. a lot of yeah, ass. Is okay. he what is yours like food? yours is not that much is it lady i want to say this to you okay your husband <laughs> he's eating cat food he's eating cat food and also he's um got a beautiful ass. It's so mm -hmm. no spots. It's so big. I, I'm gonna also to say this right. That line right is longer than the fucking ch the, the Great Wall of China. That's the longest ass crack I've ever seen it's in my fucking so life. So long. It goes to the, his mid back, and I believe <laughs> that instead of looking at it as an ass crack, you look at it as like a Titanic plate, a Titanic plate, or mm -hmm. something that's like you know what I mean, or something that's like one of the wonders of the world. Mm -hmm. And you appreciate it as if it's, you know what I mean? Being Here's all. what I'll say is that. <laughs> you were somewhere. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I think that like. <laughs> tectonic plates. Why do you say tectonic plates, man? <laughs> Go ahead, babe. I, it's like when I see someone in public and I see their ass crack, it just doesn't register as anything to me. me it's too. just like, that's an ass crack. And it's like, I don't. I'm not looking for a place outside of his ass crack to look. I'm looking right into that ass crack. And I'm like, that's an ass crack. And then I move on with my life. So I think what she's feeling is secondhand embarrassment for what she thinks other people's perception is of that ass crack. Also, I've had friends go, I've been public with friends and have friends go, dude, look at that guy's bad ass crack. And me looking at them and go, yeah, I don't look at people's assholes. I look right into it. I don't. It's none of my business. But also it doesn't it, it, bother me. It's like, me. I don't, uh, it, it, what... Dude, I'm not noticing dude's ass cracks because I don't look. If we, you I, have to look. If you're bending down, I, I do this. I don't look. And if I look, I like it. Well, accidentally. I'm just, all I'm saying is that it doesn't. That was a bad point of view. Here, here, here's, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't bother here's my. Here's the point of view. I think I, I can get my mind around. Yeah, yeah. No one cares. Mm. If he's at. Vaughn's and he's getting or a grocery store and he's getting like something at the bottom shelf and he's bent over like that. No one cares. 
I, I certainly don't. Do you, George? No. I don't care. What I would suggest is either buy him a belt or... Or stick stuff in there. Or buy him... Like a coin. Some red, See, what uh, a red thong to put over his regular Ooh. underwear so he has a big whale tail. Whale so you're tail. You're a part of this. Oh. Yes. So you're... You're in on the joke with him rather than sitting on the outside being embarrassed. You're in looking for people to look so you can laugh at them when at their reaction. Or I have a better theory. <laughs> can you hear me out? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I want her to hear me out. Basically what you do is see how his ass crash goes with his back, okay? If he wanted to make a tail, okay, but he took his anal tube, it made that into a tail. You love the anal Just tails, listen, dude. Right, make, imagine this. Every and that's a tail, right? And he, when he doesn't want to play the tail game, he can stick the tube and latch it onto the crack. What? What? As a as a holder. Oh, oh, oh! As a okay. So see the crack. Yeah. The tube. Imagine a tube, a tail sticking out, right? When he doesn't want to do the game, he just puts it back into place. And he holds it. And it holds it like this. Like a Clamp. knife rack. Like a knife rack. <laughs> what was the okay? That's a, I, I just well, here, I'm throwing out theories, dude. I think here's a hacky joke, a, a hacky tattoo artist joke oh, that they go. do. Here what? we go. They say like, like <laughs> older tattoo artists will be like, yeah, put one M, put an M on one cheek, put an M in the other, so it says mom. And then if you do cartwheels, it says wow, mom, wow. That's good. <laughs> but with him, it would say mim. Mim. Because <laughs> it's ass cracks mim, a lot. Mim, mim. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. That's well, what if, I'm in the hospital right now. It doesn't even matter. Can you? Can I ask you a sincere question? <laughs> Please, Cloud. Yeah, yeah, Please end this. Can I ask you a sincere question? I said. Go ahead. Yes. My sincere question to you is: You do love poo and cum a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever pooed on someone? Hmm. Be serious. No. Why not? <laughs> That's a great question. The way she said it, I'm sorry. What a great question. I've never been asked that question. Why haven't I? You really like poo. Number one, I feel like it's a friendship ender. To poo on somebody, I feel like it's, it's one of those things where it's like yeah, it crosses the line, kind of. It's a line. I think you're searching for it though, because every time I'm in the bathroom, he really loves to like time it and like barge in every single time. So I think that I should attempt to poo on your chest. Give you a good old oh, hot Carl. You want to be pooped on. Bro, I would do that for the experience. He'll roll into your armpit. I would love it. Do you think you guys would laugh a lot during that or would it be very I think, I think that I think I think if he'd vomit on my poo. I think she had oh, done if fuck. she had done if she does that for real. I'd just be like, this relationship, we need to go to therapy. <laughs> this has gone beyond any recognition of, of healthy. I think that's what happened. Anyway. Well, kink's a king. I'm in hospital. I got to see you when I get back. I love you guys so much. Goodbye. Oh. Claude, well, would you like to, uh, from everything today, would you like to say anything to uh, the world? The world. Any, um, any final thoughts on this? podcast episode what are you feeling I, I i just feel real sad for him mm -hmm. um i also think that um yeah this isn't just good for him it's good for me because i've been um you've carried a lot i think that's like a, that's an addiction right addiction is a very selfish thing so it's always like everyone what's bobby doing and mm -hmm. i feel um very like kick to the back of the room in terms of like my own needs and my mm -hmm. own like struggle with mental health as well. But I know that I am also sick, mm -hmm. that um, I understand what the codependent addict relationship looks like. And I, I feel like we're very deep into that. And um, so when he's out, I think that I'm probably going to get help myself because I cannot break out of the I'm so I can intellectualize codependency really well, but I can't seem to um, impart that knowledge into my own life in a way that is um, that goes up against his addiction. Like it's mm. I, I can't really explain it besides like I've been miserable, mm -hmm. and um, but I really do. I'm I feel relief that he's going somewhere. I I think that maybe. Um, I can't be positive if I'm not taking care of myself either, you know? But 
We should end on a good note. I'm relieved. Oh, I really am. I just want to say, because we've been talking about Bobby this whole time, mm-hmm. that my hope for you is that I just want you to feel like you were just describing. I feel like there's so much weight. You carry so much. You guys, you don't know. She could, this woman carries a lot of weight. <laughs> that you feel levity from whatever yeah. you're looking for. And I really hope that you just feel like if there's just like a giant comforter that you're just covered with peace during this time of your break because you carry a lot. And, uh, yeah, you shouldn't have to always Thanks, be Gail. lifting that. So I really am hoping for like honest, true peace where you feel some feel free, honestly. Thanks, Gil. I think it'll take some time. It will. And, you know, um, I think Bobby and I are so tethered deeply in our hearts to one another. Intertwined. Yeah, that... Um, you know, it's, yeah, it's just been really hard because when he's in pain, like, I obviously just can't be like, that's your pain. Mm-hmm. I always kind of take it on for myself, too. So, um, but, but yeah, I'm just relieved. And um, we have fights to watch tonight before okay. he leaves, or he leaves, he leaves to good old Let's rehab. Let's go food, too. Yeah. Guys, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you soon. We love you. Bye, guys.